I hope I've been helpful, my friends, but I do want, really, I want you to take it seriously because I am just so afraid for people that don't get it, that, ha that aren't going to jump off the ship soon enough. And, uh, you know, so get the word out. I'm just one person, even if I was just speaking to one person, if that one person talks to two people and those two people talk to four, you get where this thing goes? So this is how the power has got to spread through the knowledge and just wake people up. We've got to come out of our slumber and say, it's getting scary. There's a lot of people are dying now and find out that that's really what they want. They're trying to kill us. So, you know, get, get with the program. Let's fix our problems. Let's realize that there's a lot of powerful people that don't want our problems fixed, and you understand why, that they've got to keep the desperate poverty above all else. That's that one thing they need, that one aspect, that one facet, that one component that they've got to keep intact. They've got to keep people being poor and poor. And they, remember, the, the, pretext, the, the pretense is that it's to save the earth. So the poor can't use energy. They can't drive cars, right? The homeless aren't driving cars. They're not. They've got a zero carbon footprint for the most part, right? They're not heating and cooling their homes, right? They're not taking vacations, flying around in jets, right? So yeah, they're they're the best, but are they exalted and vaunted in society as such and say, look at these people, they have the lowest uh, carbon footprint, the homeless out there, and you know, these are the sages of the land and you know, let, let, let let's exalt them. Are they is that is that what happens? No, isn't the opposite true? So we're taught on one hand that it's good to have a really low carbon footprint to save the planet. And, you know, we've got to be alarmed about, you know, climate change and all this stuff. But then they're pushing, look at the consumerism. Look at that. And how, and then I wonder how we cope. I mean, I, I don't know how we cope. I mean, it is by the grace of God that we cope with this scene. I mean, this is insanity. You understand we're being rendered insane. It's insanity. So it's good, right? Let me get this straight. It, it, for the economy, it's good that I go out and consume as much as I can, right, to pass the buck and, and keep the, you know, the velocity of currency, the cash flow going. So spend, spend, spend. Yes, consume. Hey, you're good. You're a good consumer. Chamber of Communists it will tell you, yeah, good. Business is always good. Spend, spend, buy, consume, consume, consume. But yet we're told out of the other side of the mouth of the mainstream media to not consume, not consume, it. carbon footprint, save the planet, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We are so screwed. We are so deeply in the dog crap, okay? It's up to our nostrils. And when it maybe when it gets in people's sinuses, they start waking up. And they realize, oh, my God, this stinks to high heaven. We've been duped roundly taken for decades upon decades like frogs in a pot of water we've been boiled we're cooked we're done they're eating us now monsters not democrats not republicans not socialists not capitalists not the left not the right all of them have taken us down this road seamlessly the trajectory is the same toward death and destruction and despair hopelessness and misery and god help us just god help us i mean that with every fiber of my being i hope i get across to somebody because if i can get across to one person that's it man that's 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 all i need to do one person has to listen to me that's it and if you're somebody in a, in a position of influence great that's what I, I i'd like to be the no name guy plagiarize i mean i plagiarize everything i mean i'm quoting scripture all the time and other great people and every I, you know so we're all pledged just take it i don't care i don't need a name i don't give a crap about fame and fortune i just want us to get our act together god's a famous one man i'm god's kid so exalt god exalt jesus exalt the bible i mean exalt those that are really trying to do the right thing and be a good friend to humanity and a good servant of god but you know use it and, and, and convey it in your own style, in your own way, more cogently, more, co more coherently than I can. But just let's get out there and get the job done, man. Let's get this worm turned. Let's get this ship turned. Okay, let's get the job done. And God is helping us, but we've got to really get really, really, really serious and really have that fear of God in your soul and just say, I am so scared of not doing enough. And just really being, you know, lulled to sleep by this, this, this madness. That, you know, we're, we're done, man. They're, they're devouring us. We've got to just stop it now. We've got to fix our problems at all costs. Just permanently fix our problems. And there are permanent fixes. And we've got to admit it. 
and we've got to stop this. Stop this evil madness, this satanic ritual, this beast running us around by the nose and the short hairs of our neck through these human beings, these political class that authorize every lap dogs for the money printing class, the most evil entity on the face of the earth. God, we're in so much trouble, my friends. God help us to get it, to really, really understand the implications, the ramifications for not getting it. Okay, we've got to be empowered and empower others to go out there and do everything God puts on your mind, on your heart to do. Let's do it. Let's work together. Let's unify as human beings and get the job done and get this across to people. But, you know, let's, let's really just give a crap about each other. Do what Jesus said. He said, you know what, all the law and the prophets, that means the Ten Commandments, he didn't come to get rid of them. He came to fulfill them. But they'll all be fulfilled if we just love God above all else and decide to serve him and his will and devote to it in prayer and ask for the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and honor him above all else, and then treat others the same way, accordingly, just like that. The same way we want to be treated, like little gods with the dignity and respect that God has for us, the love and the caring, wanting the same things for others that we want for ourselves. It's all easy, simple. It's kids, ch children can understand. It's all logical and reasonable. Okay, so you know what, I mean, we'll be insured to go to a better world if we do these things. But if we don't do them, we're, we're insured to go to a, not a good world. So that place, that's why, that's the blood. I don't want it on my hands or on my head. I don't want people going to hell because I didn't do enough to, to really reveal to them, you know, how much trouble we're in from God's point of view. That at this point in history, man, we should be shaking in our shoes. When God says, where's the, where's the beef? Where's the progress here? Show me, what have you done? How, how, you look at you've squandered the grace I gave you with the final propitiation for your sins through Jesus Christ. And look what you've done. You call yourselves Christians. What's he going to say to you on that day? Away from me, all you evildoers. Because if you didn't do something, you can say, but I wasn't evil. Well, what you didn't do, you neglected, you, you were indifferent. You were complacent about the suffering. You divorced yourself from the suffering of the least of men. You're going to hell. So, I sorry, I'm starting to feel like I'm going around in circles here, but I thought I didn't feel like pontificating, but I sure did a lot of it, folks. So, listen, I'm going to go on to some of the current events. You know, Trump does say and do some pretty stupid things. I think he really needs to look into this diet soda he's drinking. Look up Dr. Russell Blaylock. Somebody get that information to him and what he says about aspartame. That's in that diet soda. What he says about the damage to the brain, the wood alcohol poisoning. This could do it. This could throw off his thinking. He looks like he's got a fantastic constitution physically, but, you know, so that's why he's been able to go as long as he has, but he's got to get away from that stuff and detox if he wants to save his brain. Listen to Russell Blaylock and do what he says to heal, to cleanse the toxicities from your brain from that crap, man. Look into it. Tell somebody, somebody that knows Trump, man, get that message across. But yeah, I mean, because so, some of the stuff, he's, he's obviously a genius business-wise and a lot of other ways, but uh, and he got a great constitution. But man, he does and says some stupid things, and I think it could be attributable to toxins in the brain from that damned aspartame, that wood alcohol poisoning. Yeah, you know, I was visiting my daughter in Pacifica this last week, and my 32-year-old daughter, and uh, you know, she's absolutely disillusioned with capitalism. And I totally understand it. This is where guys like Alex Jones have to step up to the plate. Everybody thinks they're an economic expert. Well, let's talk about it. Let's define some terms. Let, let, you know, let's see your outrage over the bailout of 08. Let, let's see. Let, let's define crony capitalism and explain how that vulture capitalism, how that's really been the rule of the day. It's not true capitalism. It's not anything based on free market or supply and demand. The government's in there manipulating and bailing out. How is that free market? So explain this to people that have gone socialist, like you've turned my daughter Okay, that really believe that's the egalitarian path as the Democrats are the blue collar working class people when really nothing can be further from the truth as evidenced through what Slick Willie did to us getting rid of the Glass Steagall Act. God, he's, he's a backstabber, man. He, he did the worst he's betrayal to the working class blue collar people he could, anybody could ever do. <laughs> God, with the, getting rid of that Glass Steagall Act and, and all these money printers. And, dumping money on the housing market and just getting away with it, man, and leading up to that bailout of 08 
and Bush encouraging. God, all these people are just useless pustules, man. Worse than useless pustules. we got to swim around in their pus. A useless pustule, maybe you could pop, you know, and, and, and wipe off the pus. But these people, man, no, they make you have to swim in their pus. So, yeah, I, I, I can't stand that political class. I just, I just want to put them all on minimum wage. Don't get into politics if you're trying to make money, okay? Only the people with the noblest of character should get into these positions, and they should be appointed by others, okay? The noble in the village should appoint the most noble people to represent them, okay? That's how what we need, okay? The people don't give a crap about power and control, that just really want to be a friend of humanity and a good servant of God and to give a damn and to free the people, to offer the people the same things they want for themselves and their families, their level on its best to do that. And we can achieve it easily, simply. There's all kinds of solutions. That's one thing my daughter and I totally agree on is that this thing is concocted, that they don't want solutions, that it would devastate the current establishment if they actually had some fixes. And the first and foremost at the top of that list they've got to keep intact is desperate poverty. They do not want that to end. They need people to live in abject terror Okay, to extract those, continue to extract those exorbitant rents and mortgages. People have to live in just, just absolute terror of homelessness. Just, it's just got to be real. It's got to be just, they've got to be on the edge of their seats in, in fear, okay, in order to keep getting it. Because uh, otherwise they're just not going to do it, okay. Your master is who you got to pay your cost of living to. It's not the one you go to work for. Working is a joy. Okay, that's a fact. Serving is a joy. That's an instinct. It's biblically based, what I'm saying. It's not just what Mark Twain said in Tom Sawyer's Adventures, okay? Getting your friends to pay, pay you to paint your fence, okay? No, it's a reality, as evidenced through all the volunteerism. And in many other ways, what King Solomon said. In many other ways. So the system's not going to break down if everybody's rich, if everybody's prosperous, and having nothing to do with money, okay? Just our reality from birth, born free, not beholden to the money masters of misery, told this is the right, this is just the way it is, and accept it. And it's just, you know, unless you accept it, you lack common sense, and, you know, you're not pragmatic. You don't fit in. You're impractical. You're just a nut, an idealist, a pipe dreamer, and you're just to be poo-pooed. No, no, I'm going to be, I'm going to turn out to not be the crazy guy here. You'll see, everybody, you'll see. We got this young, dumb, punk kid, in my opinion, Ben Shapiro, taking over Michael Savage's job on the um, radio show, on the radio show. So, the guy that said he's never had an original thought, so he depends on other people to tell him what to think. And then we got these people now all of a sudden they're bitching about interest rates going up when for decades they were bitching about it and saying, well, it's causing, you know, even guys like Salenti, they said, well, then Max Kaiser, they would tell them, they said, well, this is it. They, they, they're going to zero interest rate. I mean, they're doing everything they can to prop up a failed economy. It's crony capitalism. And if we had had interest rates intact, a, a reasonable, you know, based on, on reality, that uh, they, would, they would never have been allowed to manipulate the housing market the way. And they're right. They never would have gotten the prices up like they did, the cost, the burden. You know, but where the mainstream media, no, oh, no, it's value and, and it's equity. And they don't, you know, they don't use the term unearned increment like they'll teach you when you take real estate. It's ill-gotten gain. Yeah, yeah, your price for your house wasn't supposed to go up for no good reason. You didn't do any improvements. But the mainstream media, hey, take it and run, man. It's, you know, it's the value your house went up. We don't know why. It just did. And uh, demand, it's a lack of supply, supply and demand. But they're not, not, not based on reality because if you look at the inventories, and I've done the math myself, okay, which nobody else I've ever heard of ever did. But I found out back in 2006 you could have housed every homeless man, woman, and child in America and still have 90% of the vacant available housing left over, not including, not counting, hotels and motels. So uh, this housing shortage thing, uh-uh, no, 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 you can't play that card anymore. That's done, cooked, okay? You people want to manipulate markets, do it with the high-end stuff. They pick the low-hanging fruit. They There's no hope. The, the poverty-stricken are hope. It's hopeless. 
hopeless. And the Labor Department is keeping to be deliberately remiss. We're not going to talk about the real consumer price index and really setting minimum wage based on that the way we used to 50 years ago, okay, when we had reality-based uh, minimum wage. We're not going to worry that we've slowly been getting into slavery. We've been legitimizing slavery, okay, because people can't get ahead. All they have is hopelessness. It's called oppression. It's called too much burden, okay, but we're not going to have that discussion. See how the mainstream media misleads you? The stuff that they don't talk about is just as important